Welcome to part two. If you have not seen part one, I really suggest you watch it because I don't want you to miss anything. This is going to be a, probably a 40 minute long two video uh, <clears throat> uh, bit. Uh, okay, so we left off talking about St. Augustine and uh, relating that to the Christians of today and how not all of them, I can never say all Christians because a lot of them are great people. Primarily, the ones who consider America to be Christian, the ones who are mostly born again, extremely Protestant, maybe some by Baptists, um, <clears throat> evangelists, not even all of those people either, but it's the majority of the, uh, the loud and abrasive Christians today are that, that. <laughs> so, I wanted to discuss... Uh, religious war, the war on religion in this country, uh, as related to the birth control con uh, controversy, but it's all encompassing, really. So, <clears throat> there's this is an article. It's from February, so it's fairly recent. Actually, no, it's exactly a month old. Okay, so I've been watching the news a lot, and I've been reading the news a lot, and uh, a lot of conservatives particularly conservative Christians who are against the birth control mandate, they are claiming, and I like to think that Obama is, <clears throat> you know, that this war on religion in this country, like Obama is waging this war on religion in America. Um, it's interesting to note that Obama is himself quite, you know, fairly religious. He's Christian, right? I'm, he prays, he probably prays, or he probably goes to church. He's a, a regular Christian. Um, so I'd like to wonder how a Christian is waging war on um, Christianity, in particular Catholicism. Okay, so let me read you this blurb from the, uh, it's the economist.com. The article is called Obama's War on Religion. Okay. Oh, I should have highlighted the paragraph. Okay. The Affordable Care Act says that employers must provide health insurance to their workers, or pay a fine, and allows the government to lay down minimum standards of cover when they do so. Etc. Et Last summer, the health department decreed that all new health insurance policies should cover birth control services for women, including the morning after pill which most pro-lifers consider a form of abortion and sterilization. Churches are exempt. Churches are exempt. But church-affiliated hospitals, schools, and universities, most of which employ and serve people of many faiths, are not exempt. Okay, once the new rule comes into effect in 2013, they will have to include such services to their insurance packages at no extra cost to the employee. Uh, this article also doesn't mention because it's not relevant to this article, but um, this whole birth control thing, only lower income women are eligible for the free birth control. I have read that and I have heard that. So it's not like every woman is eligible for free birth control, it's like lower income women. Okay, and uh, so churches, Catholic Church in particular, is exempt you know, so church employees, the churches don't have to offer the birth control, which is fine. That, to me, is reasonable. I understand that. That's respecting the church. But church-affiliated like organizations like hospitals and schools and universities, I'm pretty sure it's probably some others. So if I work for a Catholic hospital, it could happen, you know? There's hospitals I've tried to get jobs at. So if one of them were Catholic, I don't think any of them around this area are, and this happens, what they would want to see happen is just, even though I'm not Catholic or Christian, just because I work for a, a Catholic hospital, that automatically means I can't have affordable birth control through my health insurance plan. That, to me, is wrong. Okay? And this is what they're they're seeing as a war on religion. Obama's war on religion. Okay. 
let's let's pick this apart. So you have a let's just say, we'll use the hospital because hospitals are pretty damn important places. So you you say you've got a Catholic hospital. Let's say half the people who work there are Catholic. The other half are other Christians, maybe a couple of Jews, a couple of pagans, a couple of atheists, whatever, whatever, right? It's America. Anything can happen. So let's say it's 2013, and these Catholic hospitals are now have to cover birth control for their lower income female employees. Um, they don't want to because they feel it infringes upon their religious rights. To me, in my opinion, that does not because you have a large number of non-Catholic or even non-Christian employees. Okay, this isn't a matter of well, if you don't. If you don't like our policies, get another job. Sorry, but that is kind of infantile. It's not that easy. You know, if I'm working at a, at a Catholic hospital, I just can't quit and get another job just because, you know, you don't want to cover my birth control. Duh, it's infantile. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. They're like, are we are freaking out. These The Catholics... A couple of bishops, they're freaking out because they think Obama is trying to wage war on their religious freedom. No, he's not. Okay, so you've got Catholic women in this hospital. It would be infringing on your religious rights if he, if Obama was forcing, if this mandate was forcing women to take the birth control. If Catholic women who don't want to be on birth control are being forced to take it, then we have an argument. Then he's infringing on your religious rights. But until that day, he's not. Because it's very simple. If you're working for a Catholic hospital who offers birth control to low-income women and you don't want to take the birth control, this is very, very simple. Oh my god. Don't take the birth control. Okay? Because what that does is if you get your way in your your hospital doesn't have to offer the female employees birth control through the insurance, that screws over your non-Catholic or your non-Christian employees. Just because you don't want to take the birth control because of your religious affiliation, which is fine, I'm not going to judge you, but don't use your religion and your sense of entitlement to tell me that I can't have the birth control. Is that clear? Right? Does that make sense? Okay? It is a sense of entitlement to me. I'm sorry. That's all I see is when Christians are freaking out saying you can't offer free birth control. We're supposed to be moral and pure. No, no, no. You are. Because you choose to be. Don't use your religion against me. Your religion is for you. My religion is for me. I will take the birth control because I am low income and cannot afford it. You don't have to. And the fact that you don't have to, you have a choice not to take it. This is a free country and we are living up to that because you don't have to take it. Okay, you don't even have to take, let's talk about Christian scientists. They have every right not to seek medical uh, intervention. They have the right not to go to the doctor. We're not dragging them, kicking and screaming to the doctor. You have a choice. You don't have to go to the doctor. You don't have to take the birth control. Okay? There is no religious war on this country against Christians. Okay? Here's why. Nobody's telling you you can't do what you have to do. Your churches are not being shut down and burned down. You can still go to church without interference, okay? There are many, many Catholic hospitals and schools and universities, okay? Notre Dame, the Mormons, they have Brigham, Brigham Young. Christianity is in no danger in this country. And it probably never will be. But, since we're on the topic of religious war and religious intolerance and religious persecution, I'm going to use your argument against you. Not you, watching this, I hope. But the, the people that were claiming this religious war and, you know, religious persecution by the president 
who shares most of their religious beliefs. Okay. I am a pagan. Okay. I represent a fairly small but steadily growing minority in this country. I want more religious tolerance. I feel that many, not all, many pagans have been and are still being abused, bullied, mistreated, treated very poorly in many, many cases by many Christians. So yeah, not all Christians. And not even Christians, you know, there's other people too that have hand in this. People who have been believing the lies for too long. People who are too, too uh, intolerant and they don't want to, they don't want to understand. They're, they're good. They're good like this. I think I have, I should be able to celebrate my holidays publicly in this country without fearing injury. May Day two years ago, I was in my own yard. In my garb at the Maypole and I had something thrown at my head by somebody driving by. I call bullshit at my school. Oh, by the way, that May Day thing happens every year. Every year. And it's not just bottles. It's obscenities. It's people stopping at the stop sign at our, at our house and yelling shit to us in our own yard. It's our neighbors who are freaked out by us have told their kids things about us. Back to school. Okay. At school, we have built our own stone circle that has been desecrated countless times over the four years it's existed. Okay? We have had our property, our posters, and our, our you know, our advertisements at school totally desecrated. Graffiti. I found them in the trash. Oh, I, I witnessed a couple of people do it, but we won't get into that. Okay? You want to talk about holy war in the context that you used it? Let's talk about holy war in the context that you used it. Okay? Pagans in this country, just for being pagan, just for being witches or Wiccans or Druids or heathens, so misunderstood, so mistreated socially. Okay? Parents, especially in the Deep South, where they are still allowed to be pagan in the Deep South, okay? They can have their children taken away from them because of hostile living environments. Well, not hostile, but non-child-friendly living environments. They're Wiccan. Pretty sure that they're not sacrificing their children to horned gods. That's not happening, you know? <clears throat> it's difficult for pagans to be public about their religion. Some people are in the closet at work. Some people are in the closet at school. Many young adults, teenagers, are in the closet in their own homes. Do you want to talk about war on religion? Let's talk about war on religion. And it's by many of the evangelical, born again, uninformed and uneducated Christians in this country, among other people. And it's against the pagans. Now, I'm not saying this in a literal sense that pagans are being persecuted. I'm only using it in the context that it was used to describe Obama's holy war, or lack thereof, on the, on the, on the Catholic Church. You're forcing our insurance comp you're forcing us to offer birth control through our insurance policy. Well, yeah, you have to offer it, but it doesn't mean the women employees are going to take it. They have the choice. All you have to do is say it's here if you need it, you know? It may go against your um, religious belief, but you're not the one taking the birth control. It's your non-Catholic or non-Christian female employee that wants it. You have no right to tell her not to take it. Okay? So, that's, that's war on religion. And I'm not saying that there is a literal war on religion on anybody in this country. But it's the context. If you want to talk about a religious demographic who is being mistreated, being walked on like a rug, 
totally misunderstood, forced to be closeted, have bottles thrown out their head. Let's talk. Pagans are those people. We really don't have many rights. Well, we do have rights. People don't want us to have them. Especially when we want to have like um, go to Salem for Halloween we go to Salem for Halloween in like droves there's Christians picketing and protesting us for going to hell yeah you have the right to picket we have the right to be here who's infringing on whose rights just some food for thought I could keep going but I won't I hope that I hope that I put that into context I hope that I I've made you guys think. I hope you guys come up with your own ideas too. Um, again, this is just one person's opinion, one person's observation. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. But I would appreciate if you respected my opinion. And if you don't like it, I don't really care. But I do hope that you've, uh, you've taken this in a sort of positive way. Alright, so have a good day. I am going to go uh, eat.